Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting tutorial. This time we are going to be working on the absolutely stunning new avatar of Kane from Games Workshop. Um, this kit came out about a week ago and it is absolutely amazing. It was really difficult to pick which of the three variants inside I wanted to build. In the end I went for the uh, more Spartan-esque one with the nice big plume um, and the spear. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to paint that up um, quickly, efficiently, ready for a tabletop and ready to be used in your games. So, so sit back and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so here is the miniature after I've prepped it for painting. I've constructed it with the, uh, the parts that I've wanted to. I gave it an all over coat of Chaos Black Spray and then a Zenithal of Grey Seer. Um, there's a link at the top of the screen now to a video that will show you how to do that if you are curious. But yeah, I thought this was the best way to prep it if I'm going to mimic the avatar, the Forge World avatar that I did in a previous video in an eBay rescue style um, and see how much of that I could transfer to this guy. So we started with Blood Angel's red contrast and we want to apply this to basically 90% of the miniature. We want to get a nice red tone down, um, which will form the base coat of most other colors that we're going to do on this miniature. So don't worry too much about hitting any parts that you're not supposed to hit as, like I said, most of the bits will indeed be going red. I think the only thing I was careful with is the uh, plumes coming off his uh, the back of his head, the tabard in front and the spear. Everything else pretty much went red. This is definitely the new centerpiece of the Eldar range. Um, I've painted up most of the new Eldar range at this point, and this is by far the most beautiful kit they have. Next, we're going to move on to Troll Slayer Orange to begin bringing up that like molten part of his body up um, through a couple of stages of dry brushing. So, if you look at the box, you notice that this avatar is in fact wearing a good bit of armor from the knee down, from the elbows up, shoulders and head are armored. So it's all the other bits that you want to hit with this orange dry brush. So all the torso, legs, arms, those kind of bits and pieces. And this is going to be a three stage dry brush going up and up to kind of give that fire and molten effect to the miniature. So that's the first stage with the orange. We quickly move over to yellow, um, repeat the process, but just higher dry brushing a little bit lighter. You can see the miniature here, all the different parts that I hit with the orange. One of the things I made sure to hit was all of the fire because that's obviously um, the same technique, same color scheme that we're going for. So once again, center torso, his thighs and his forearms, um, all with the yellow, sorry, not his forearms, his biceps. As you can see, I'm going lighter with this dry brush as I don't want to overpower the orange. I'm trying to get in a little bit on the details on his face because of this helmet. He's uh, kind of the mysterious one. Is most of his face is actually hidden. And then once you've gotten all of the yellow dry brushing done, we're going to move across to a final light white dry brush. This will just be a very light touch up. Um, this will just add that final bit of color to the miniature and really make him have that like molten feel. I do feel this is one of those techniques that's just such a quick thing to do, but it gives great results. Just adds that like, you actually feel heat coming off of the model kind of thing. Like I said, don't worry about hitting the armor or anything else. Those are all going to get repainted afterwards. So don't be panicking too much. Sorry about the bad framing there. Here's a bit of fire here and just a quick touch of white. And it really does bring it to life. Okay, this is the entire miniature done with all of those molten parts and all of the fire. Once I got to this stage, I, I knew I was going to enjoy this whole process and I was going to be super happy with the end result of the miniature. Next is the Retributor Armor Gold stage. This stage is by far the most tedious part of painting this miniature. Um, I think it took me maybe 40 minutes of just going around painting gold trim and gold designs that are littering this model. There are so many parts to it. So please take a breath take your time and just make sure you get all of those parts and um, remember it's a once off you're gonna have one avatar in your army so it is worth spending time and getting this particular stage right and um, the end results will uh, will thank you the more I went around the miniature the more parts that I saw little designs on shin guards and shoulder pads and helmet trim and yeah it was
was a lot of gold. But once I had all the gold on, I was once again quite pleased with how it looked and the placement of it and stuff and how the color was broken up. So here it is with all of the gold base coated. And as you can see, it is quite a lot of gold. <laughs> Next, we move on to the contrast black. And we're gonna use this on, well, I use this on three main areas of the miniature. I used it for the sta shaft of the spear. If you use a sword or the ax, um, you could do it for the same parts, the hilts or the handles. I also used it for the tabard running down the, the center of him. Now I did that in black because I wasn't really sure what other color to do it. I thought if I added more red, it would maybe be too red of a model. So I did it with black. I intend to add transfers to it later on, maybe some Samhain white transfers. Um, but uh, I didn't do this in this particular video. I also did uh, the plumes coming off the back of his head and all of the straps um, and uh, belts and stuff across his body. If you've watched any of my other Eldar videos, you know now that I wash my red and purple for my Samhain in purple. So I want this guy to match in with my Samhain army. So I then went along and I washed every part of the miniature that wasn't that molten core that we did the dry brushing on with a Druchi Violet. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Trust the process, guys. I know it seems bizarre to uh, layer up or to shade the miniature with purple, but it was a great color going over gold. It sits really nice next to red. Um, so it will work out really nice in the end, I promise. Just take your time and trust the process. And while the uh, the shade is drying on all of these pieces and we work on the base, I'm just gonna take a quick second to uh, talk to you guys. Okay guys, while we wait for that shade to dry, I thought I'd just take this opportunity to thank you guys for the continued support um, for my channel and for the 365 project. Um, we're going strength to strength as goes for subscribers. Um, comments, likes, and views are all really good. Um, and all I can do is ask you guys to keep doing that. Keep watching the videos, keep dropping those likes, ask me any questions you have below in the comments. I get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you want to make, take it a step further and join uh, the 365 community over on Discord, there's links to my Patreon below. Thank you very much, guys, and let's get back to painting. Okay, and with the shade dry and with the basing done, this is where we're at with the miniature. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm super pleased with how this model is turning out and I was super excited to see how it turned out in the end. So it kind of pushed me forward into continuing to paint, maybe when I should have taken a couple of breaks, but uh, it was just such a fun process. So next it's time for the Mephiston red layering. This is where we're gonna bring that armor from the kind of wine color that it is now, um, or the dark red burgundy color, whatever you wanna call it, um, up to that bright red that will match my Samhain army. This is the same process I went through doing the, the other jet bikes in the previous video or the all talk or the Guardians, and just getting that red to match in with the rest of the army. So on such large um, miniature parts, um, I had to do two thin coats. The first coat is the one you need to be meticulous on. You need to make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies. The second coat of red that you do on the model, it's more the raised areas, anywhere that people are gonna notice um, if the paint is a little thin. So those big uh, knee pads or um, his helmet and the big plume is definitely something you wanna go over with the red twice just to make sure you get that nice, pure, coat this was one of those stages where the red seems really stark um, over what you've already done but it's only when the red dries that it kind of settles itself down a little bit and it looks more kind of like what you wanted which is another thing that's quite a difficult thing to do in painting is to trust that the paint will dry to the color that you want it to I mean, I don't know how many times I've applied a bit of paint to a miniature and been like, oh, that's not right, and like wiped it off my thumb or tried to get rid of it. Even though for all I know, after it dried, it could be the exact tone that I'm after. Except there's lots of interesting shapes and stuff on this particular armor piece and getting it right and not hitting any of those gold pieces that we've already done. Took a little bit of time. Not as long as trimming the gold, but it did take a long time. This is me going in with that second coat, just giving you the idea of how some of the parts have dulled down with just the first coat after they dried. And I wanna make them pop again. So just another quick coat. From here, it's time to touch up uh, all of those gold parts. 
And with this, I'm gonna use my trick that I like to use, which is the, the gold wash down with the purple. And then just to uh, bring it up again, I just use a little bit of that belcher again. And I do what I call like dot highlighting, but I don't actually know the actual proper name of it. But you're just trying to hit all of those sharp points of the miniature with some of the silver paint. And I also hit all of the gemstones with a coat of silver. So when I go in and contrast them later on, they really do pop. This uh, layering technique is a super fast and effective way of uh, layering up all of the gold on this miniature. Like I said, it took me 40 minutes to make kind of base coat all of the gold. It took two or three minutes to get these silver dots all over it. Um, and that, that to me brings the painting of those gold parts to a close. I'm happy with that. Next, I did Administratum Grey. You can use any bright color that you have to hand. I just wanted to base coat um, all of the blood stain, all of the blood draining down from his hands in a nice bright color again, so that when I come in and hit it with Blood for the Blood God afterwards, it has something to shine through on. If I had just thrown it over that now, all of that red from the contrast before would just kind of throw it off or any of the gold overshoot. So yeah, I decided to basically rebase coat the blood stain with uh, Administratum Grey. From here, like I said, I just applied a coat of blood for the blood god over the top of that. If your armor is a slightly different color, a bronze or a brass or a gold, then the blood will stand out even more as it goes my Samhain. It blends in a little bit, but I definitely think using the actual blood for the blood god helps a lot because it's that visceral kind of um, glossy color. Um, so it does stand out from the armor still. At least I like to think that it does. Can tell on the battlefield that when you look at the miniature that it does indeed have a big bloody handprint um, and the next and last stage of painting this miniature is going in with the talazar blue and applying it to absolutely every gemstone on this entire miniature this is like I said another stage where you could decide to do it green or yellow or whatever color gemstones you'd like to do i like doing blue for my eldar range i also use the talazar blue in his eye sockets to give him glowing blue eyes um, to match in with the gemstones and with all of those painted that brings um, this miniature to a close this is the final result and i think i'm really proud of this particular piece i hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video i hope you got something out of it um, and yeah if you did if you like what you see don't forget to uh give the video a like if you have any questions about anything that i did in this video or any video for that matter make sure you drop it in the comments below and i will get back to each and every one of you guys thank you very much for sticking around to the end of the video and watching it all i'll catch you guys in the next video <laughs>